Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us this afternoon. Uh, we are hosting a LinkedIn team and networking presentation today. Okay, so now this is the agenda we prepared for the, uh, for the day. Uh, first introduction and the host and the uh, guest speaker. And um, what is networking? Why is networking important? Where to network? And we're going to do a little demo of using LinkedIn and the team as a, as a networking uh, tool, as, uh, as, a, as a medium to search for potential networking contacts, how to conduct informational interview and networking etiquette. And also um, our guest speaker from Paycom will also share about uh, recruiters' perspective of how to use LinkedIn uh, to recruit and some of the pointers for students. And we'll, we're gonna open up to Q&A after that. And the learning outcome we have in mind for the session is that uh, by, the, by the end of this session, we hope that you will be able to use LinkedIn and Team to search for professional contacts relevant to your career interests and being able to reach out to potential networking contacts in a professionally appropriate manner and also being able to conduct informational interviews. Uh, my name is Alex Slow. I'm the assistant director of actually, this is my old title. I'm assistant director of Transfer Graduate International Student Network. So Kelly at the D, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi everybody. Um, can you hear me and see me? I don't see my name popping up, but um, my name's Kelly Morton. I'm a career counselor at the School of Business. Um, so for those of you that are business majors or have some questions, please know um, I am happy to meet with any of you after as a one-on-one -on -one appointment. You can schedule an appointment with me through Handshake if you have some additional questions after our presentation. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Dee Kaler. I'm the Assistant Director of Alumni Career Engagement. And if there are any alumni in the house right now, you are more than welcome to make a career counseling appointment with me um, through Handshake. Um, we also have joining us um, from Phoenix, Arizona, um, Savon Sanders. Hi, Savon. Um, Savon is the West Coast Collegiate Sales Recruiting Partner for Paycom. Uh, she was previously in the healthcare staffing industry within recruiting and sales, um, but has transitioned out and has started out with Paycom um, about this time last year. So it's wonderful to have her um, here to share insights and advice as well. Thank you. Thank you, Dee. Okay, to start, what is networking? Well, I like this dictionary definition because um, the definition written here, exchange of information or service among individual groups and institutions specifically the cultivation of productive relationship for employment or business. And uh, it's very important to keep in mind that when you network, it's not just about using your connection as a stepping stone to the job you want. And in the long run, if you want to, um, if you really want to take advantage of networking, then uh, you need to be able to be, identify the individual you can build a mutually productive and beneficial relationship in the long term. And uh, um, recently I chatted with a alumna. Actually, she's very well respected professionally in our field. And in the past 20 years, she had probably, I think she had six different jobs. Only one job, only one university job she had to apply. All other five jobs she got from networking. And it's not because she got all those five jobs, not because she was tired of her job looking for something new and asked, well, do you know anything I can apply to? All those five jobs came to her because she know people who appreciate her ability and expertise. And so she always finds something more interesting than what she did before. That's why she got all those new jobs through networking. And uh, I think that's very, um, uh, that's like a master level of networking. And maybe the baby step, what we're going to learn today is um, how to identify potential networking contact and how to appropriately reach out to them, especially if you're new to networking and how to potentially uh, build a be mutually beneficial relationship. And it's not just a one-off informational interview, but how to follow up and how to stay connected. Okay, so let's continue. Uh, Kelly? I'm sorry, I was just talking on Zoom chat with this with our participants, my apologies. Okay, so why is networking important? 
especially during COVID, one thing that I really want to share is that I've been talking with a lot of my students about is that um, a lot of people that are working professionally are at home right now. And I'm not saying that people aren't busy because they certainly are busy. But I think that during COVID, it's important because people, I think, are a little bit more likely to spend time during this time chatting with you if you have questions. I think long term, you know, once people start going back to work, whether it's in a few months or, you know, halfway through the year, they're going to probably really be slammed. So really taking advantage of the time during COVID to reach out to people and have some dialogues. I think that your chances of connecting and people willing to connect with you are going to be a lot higher. So getting information about industries and companies, you know, one thing that I talk about a lot with students is they think they pick their major and then they get an internship and their internship is how they learn more about what their profession is. And the reality is, is there's this medium ground, which is informational interviewing, which is also part of networking is connecting with people to learn more about your profession, whether it's talking about it, what their day to day is like or shadowing. So in addition, expanding professional connections, we all know the advantages of that, whether it be learning about your profession or connecting with people along the lines at a later time to see if they have an internship or a job for you. Um, and then tapping into hidden job opportunities. You know, really, if you're doing A plus networking, you're going to be contacted about a job opening from your contacts at that company before they even post the job. All right, so um, where to network? Um, you can essentially network anywhere. Um, so be it from events to professional conferences to um, social activities, track receptions, networking receptions, happy hours. Um, so um, really any um, social gathering in which um, you meet with others to exchange resources and information are ideal um, places to network. Um, research suggests that um, we benefit more from our weaker ties than our stronger connections because uh, with the people that we share strong connections with, um, it's most likely that we also share the same community. Um, and so those people who we don't know, who we basically don't have any ties with, are, are more likely to provide us with more useful information and really open us up to additional um, contacts. I just want to provide a very um, quick example. I was, um, it was actually last year, I was um, headed to Phoenix, Arizona for a um, USD alumni happy hour. I was actually going to speak on networking in that event. And on the way back, I met um, on the flight a USD alum. And we just started, um, we just started talking and networking. And believe it or not, um, his wife was a USD alumna as well, who was in career transition. And um, right there and then, you know, you know, we exchanged cards, and I later had the opportunity to provide counseling to um, to his, his spouse. And so networking can essentially happen anywhere. Um, I have found all of my jobs to date through networking. Another great example um, I usually um, provide is um, I was volunteering in a conference um, one time and it was a conference in DC and something went wrong in the podium and um, like one of the participants um, laptop didn't work. And so I went in and I helped to fix it. And um, Long story short, an ambassador who was on the, um, in the audience noticed that, and um, I was connected by him, you know, just uh, shortly after the event with a job opportunity. So it's, you know, just long story short, and you can basically um, network anywhere. Um, so with that said, um, and that also includes LinkedIn and team, and Alex will now um, talk about LinkedIn a little bit, and then I'll pick up to discuss team. Okay, so LinkedIn and Team are two very powerful platforms. You want to intentionally identify the potential networking contact and uh, identify who you can reach out to, who can be the middle person to introduce you. So to start, I'm going to do a little demo of the LinkedIn alumni search. Okay. Um, here. Okay, so this is how this page looks like. Uh, you will be able to find a link directly to this page from uh, our website. I'm going to show you in a moment. And however, if for any reason you forget how to get here, just remember that uh, looking for University of looking for University of San Diego as a school, and uh, I'll 
open. Make sure it's school and uh, go to University of San Diego and look for alumni. That will take you to this page as well. So more than 56,000 alumni to look for. And depending on your interest, you can search alumni based on location, based on their current employer, and uh, uh, based on what they do, what they study, and uh, um, what they put under their uh, skills and how closely you're connected. So uh, let me just use an example that um, I get asked pretty open. So open. So the student asked me that I want to work as a diploma at US Department of State. How do I get there? What kind of degree do I need to work as a foreign service officer? And so usually I would do this search to show them that uh, look, we have 29 alumni currently work for U.S. Department of State, and uh, uh, if you're looking for somebody who's foreign service officer, now you can look at real profile and what kind of experience she has and what kind of uh, uh, advanced degree she has that lead to the career today. And uh, if I want to reach out to anybody who um, maybe I'm not directly connected with her, but I really want to reach out to her and um, chat about her career and instead of just directly connecting with this person I can also see do we share any mutual contact and ask one of those mutual contacts to introduce me first and besides looking for alumni in particular organization um, you can also look for alumni maybe you're pretty open to what you want to do. You want to look for alumni, maybe study, uh, have similar academic background. So maybe your background is marketing. You want to see any marketing alum and where are they? And oh, 15 work for Amazon. Well, let's look at those marketing graduate working for Amazon. What are they doing right now? And so now um, you can also specify, okay, under marketing, not just marketing, but there's somebody who's doing, um, anything related to social media, for example, and uh, nine of them mention social media marketing. So this is how you can refine your search result. Now again, um, when you see somebody you want to connect with, you can always try to connect with them. And if you want to do that, make sure you write a personalized invitation. And because by default, it's going to say, I would like to add you to my LinkedIn network. And if the, the future contact doesn't know, the potential contact doesn't know who you are, there's a very good chance they may just ignore you. So always add a personalized note. You have 300 characters you can use here. You can write separate sentences. And however, I've heard a lot of students saying that, oh, I try to reach out to people on, on uh, LinkedIn, but they never respond to me. And um, just keep in mind that although LinkedIn is a very good source to look for, a potential alumni contact just because of popularity, you'll be able to see so many different profiles, identify so many potential um, alumni you can reach out to. Not everybody actively use LinkedIn and actively respond to uh, your connection request. That's why, like I mentioned earlier, if you find somebody you want to reach out to, use the share connections, ask them to introduce you first. That may be most helpful. And uh, as a comparison, we also have our a mentoring platform team. And uh, I will let D to um, do a um, demo. All right. Okay, I hope everyone can see my screen now. Um, so as Alex just mentioned, um, you can use LinkedIn as well as the platform that I'll now be showing you uh, to engage with um, our alumni, um, particularly once you've determined your sort of preferred companies, the places that you wanna work at. It's always a good idea to identify USC alumni networks who are currently working within those organizations and connect with them, right, um, to ask them about about those companies, their experience there, what they find most rewarding, most challenging, the hiring criteria, the hiring timeline, and all of those things. And um, 
we have um, created this um, online networking and knowledge sharing platform. It's called TEAM, uh, stands for Terror Employers and Alumni Mentors, and enables you to connect with alumni directly. It's an opt-in space, um, and it currently boasts um, over 3,000 um, Toreros who have actually volunteered to provide career conversations. Um, so it's USD's um, equivalent of LinkedIn, but while in LinkedIn, it's more of a cold outreach, um, this is isn't entirely warm because these are all USD um, alumni volunteers. So um, this is what the welcome page looks like um, once you've joined. You can join it through mentoring.sandiego.edu. Again, that address is mentoring.sandiego.edu. Uh, it'll give you the option to join with your USD email account or your private email or your LinkedIn. Honestly, one of the easiest ways to join is through your LinkedIn because it what it does is it pre-populates um, your um, team profile with your LinkedIn information, just makes the process um, easier for you. And um, the platform has a number of features, one of which is its flash mentoring. And under the flash mentoring section, you'll see these, they kind of look like Monopoly cards. Um, they are these alumni profile cards. You can, um, any alumni, um, well, it has a wonderful um, search tool. I'll, I'll go ahead and share that with you. Um, you can filter down the alumni by where they um, are located, what they've majored in, their USD degree, as well as their company and the type of user that they are, because we have a number of users across the platform, including alumni, uh, obviously uh, you as the students, as well as job posters, non-alumni mentors, um, et cetera. Now let's say um, I was interested in jobs with Microsoft, right? If I type in uh, Microsoft in the search bar under flash mentoring, it will reveal 34 exact matches. So these are all people who in some form or you know, shape have Microsoft listed in their um, profile. Um, if um, So Courtney, for example, Courtney Kepler, alumna of USD, and she currently works there and she's based in Seattle. If I wanted to connect with her, I would just basically click, let's connect. And then um, once the site loads, you'll, um, you'll be taken to this, um, this um, messaging board. And here you can start typing in your message. And we have these built-in templates that you can use to, to connect with the alum. And you're more than welcome to obviously customize this uh, message um, you know, uh, as you wish. And once you do that, you can go ahead and click send and that person will receive that message. You'll also get a notification in the, um, in the primary email that you've specified while logging into team that you've received the message on team. Um, you can also um, you know, request a meeting with this person through here. And um, what it, it'll prompt you to do is, um, you, know, you would need to indicate your availability and then it'll send a calendar invite to that person. Um, the, the platform is really a wonderful way to, um, to meet and connect with um, new alumni. Now, I want to also show you um, one quick thing here. All right. Um, there is a built-in inbox. Um, once you click on that, this is where all of your um, correspondence with team users will fall. You can also initiate a video conferencing call. So just through the messaging app, you can um, place a regular phone call or initiate a video conferencing as well. Um, uh, the site also has a alumni job board. So um, once you become an alumni of the college, you'll be able to access um, uh, this board right here, which are professional opportunities that are provided by, um, that are posted by alumni for, um, uh, for USD alumni. Most of them are mid to, uh, mid career to senior level positions, so more advanced positions. We also have a public discussion forum where we post um, events and updates and resources information that, I, you know, that we think our students and alumni will find very helpful for their pr professional growth. There are also um, specialized communities that you can get involved in. Um, 
So anywhere from um, Black Student Alumni Network to engineering and computer science students, alumni veterans, international business, grad business programs, international alumni. So we've really tried to create this online community that you can join, you know, um, you know, at your convenience, wherever you are, to connect with Taros from all around the country and the world. Uh, and if you hit on resources section, um, here you'll have um, access to our career guide that Alex mentioned er earlier, um, the program teaser, um, video clips with, uh, uh, with USD alumni on various um, careers in different industries, um, as well as our team library that connect uh, that um, provides really useful articles and information on networking and other topics. So um, with that note, I will um, turn it over to Alex again. Okay. So now we're going to talk a little bit about the etiquette about reaching out to contacts, simple LinkedIn messages, and also uh, where to find this networking guide. Actually, I have this open right now. Um, let me just use this chance to show you how to find the resources we're sharing here today. So Career Development Center website, sandiego.edu slash careers. And uh, if you go to Career Development Center's website, um, I know this is not exclusive for undergraduate students, but currently those resources are located under the undergrad career resources. And uh, if you scroll down a little bit, you will see the link to our team account, to the LinkedIn alumni search, and also have a guide of uh, networking tips and simple messages. And a lot of information we covered today, you will also be able to find through this networking guide. Okay, um, is it me, Alex? Uh, let's see. Let's see, whose slide is this one? Okay, I think it's me. All right, um, so informational interviews. Um, so Kelly mentioned um, earlier on that, um, you know, how important informational interviews were to landing a job. And um, according to Department of uh, Bureau of Labor Statistics, 80% of jobs are found through networking. And there are a number of reasons for this. Um, number one, some positions will not get listed publicly. Okay, so companies will hire internally. So knowing people from within the company will directly give you access to professional opportunities that are otherwise not advertised um, publicly. Second, you know, you might realize that you're interested in a company only to land a job with that company and to, under to realize that it's not a perfect fit for you. Um, informational interviews is a way to kind of get to preempt that, right? Um, if you're already speaking with people working within those organizations, you can really, you know, ask them questions to understand the culture, what it means to work for that company, uh, and to really understand is that 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 fit between, um, you know, your qualifications, your skills, and your values, and what that company, um, you know, is offering. So um, it's really really important to, you know, using LinkedIn, using Teams. Um, to engage with um, with various contacts and um, and crafting your message in a way that you know that helps to forge trust and build a relationship with them first. Um, so I will, you know, I always say, you know, keep it short and sweet. Um, something like, you know, hi, this is who I am. I'm also an alumnus, alumna of USD. And I would love to, you know, I would love to brief, briefly chat with you to learn more about your, your career background and really understand, you know, what advice you might have for me. Um, sort of, you know, approaching in that way, um, it's really effective in helping to, you know, to forge that that trust and that relationship. So focusing on not really asking jobs, but really um, crafting in a way that you're seeking their advice and, and their um, and their career um, insights. In terms of elevator uh, pitches, it's really important to practice introducing yourselves. Um, so whenever I'm meeting someone at an event or or, or what have you, um, I try to think about you know aspects of me that I think would be of interest to them. 
And that requires that you know a little bit about them first. So before you reach out to anyone, read about them, check their LinkedIn profiles, see you know um, where they've gone to college, what are their skills, what are their interests, where do they currently work, um, what are their roles and responsibilities, what do they do on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, it's you know we live in a in a sort of a you know in a lucky age in the sense that we have so much you know we have great, such great access to knowledge and information that this really not really hard to, to to get and I would take advantage of that and research those people and then really talk about yourself um, in a way that you think would be of interest to them. So if I'm in a, a, at an event, you know. I, you know, people I think, you know, might find my international background interesting, right? Um, so I'll mention something about that and see if that'll spark a conversation and kind of use that to build the momentum and build that relationship. Yeah, so. Okay, um, and then sample informational, inf in, um, inf informational interview questions. Um, you know, the questions that I have um, found beneficial for my own professional growth is, um, you know, um, asking, for example, what are the top qualifications of your most successful employees? You know, if I'm going, if I'm interested in working for a company, I'd be interested to understand the um, their ideal candidate profile. Um, so what kinds of questions would really help me get at that, right? So, um, you know, what are the top skills and qualifications do you seek in employees? Um, what are your hiring criteria? What are your hiring timelines? What does a typical day look like for a so-and-so position, role? Um, what does a typical day look like for you? Um, what do you find to be the most rewarding aspects of your job? What do you find to be the least rewarding aspects, the most challenging aspects of your job? What recommendations and advice would you help, you know, have for me? Or here are the skills that I have. Are there any additional skills that you think I should develop? Um, would you mind taking a look at my resume? I would appreciate any advice you might have for me. And then um, one important thing is, um, you know, asking the person if they have any additional contacts that they can refer you to, um, because it's really important to sort of, you know, brand you know, branch out from each person that you speak with to other contacts, right? If a person is, is currently working for Google, look to see where have they been working prior, right? If they've, you know, it might be that their previous employer, right, might be a potential company for you to consider as well. Right. So you might want to ask, oh, you know, I've, I see that you've previously worked in Salesforce. Are there any contacts that you'd recommend that I speak with there? I might potentially be interested in exploring that company, too. Um, so sort of like approaching those people in that sense. And um, and that's, you know, that's essentially what network, networking is. Right. You're trying to develop a, um, a relationship. Um, that can, um, where it's sort of mutually beneficial, where you're really driving the resources and the knowledge um, that you need to move your career forward and potentially be an important and valuable resource to that person as well um, into the future. Hey, so when you are ready to reach out to a new contact here, we have a couple of sample outreach messages. So uh, making your agenda clear is very important. So uh, this is an example of asking a common contact to introduce you to a future contact. So uh, Professor Walter, in this case, is the middle contact. So Professor Walter, I noticed that you're connected on LinkedIn with Ms. Jen Smith, a medical device sales representative from XYZ Company. As we discussed in the past, I'm very interested in exploring sales career related to medical and surgical devices. And I believe there's much I can learn from Ms. Smith's experience, and it would be possible for you to connect me with her. I would really appreciate your help. Thank you for considering my request. And so when you ask your middle contact to introduce you to a new contact, um, make it clear why you're interested in connecting with this person. And make your agenda clear. So your Professor Walter is not going to be wondering, huh, why are you interested in connecting with my friend Ms. Smith? Are you trying to uh, are you trying to sell vitamin supplement or are you trying to uh, not your way to get a job? And so if you make it very clear, I will very much like to explore this career. I see Ms. Smith as expertise, would love to learn from her. And that make the agenda clear and make your uh, mutual contact feel more comfortable to introduce you. And when they introduce you, they will also know what to say to the potential future contact. 
So this is another example. Um, if you want to uh, introduce yourself directly to a new contact, and this can be used uh, as a LinkedIn connection invitation message as well. So introduce yourself. I'm a student at USD, interested in a career in uh, so and so field. I find your name through your contact, exploring career your field, have some question about your profession. Would it be possible to schedule a short meeting with you? And uh, you can even list your agenda, the agenda of the meeting. I would love to learn so and so and so. Please let me know if you'd be willing to meet with you for 30 minutes. And so again, it's very important to uh, explain why you're interested in connecting with them and what you would like to learn from them. Great. So during and after the interview, depending upon, I don't know if we touched on this too much, but if the interview is via Zoom or if it's in person, depending upon the comfort level that the person has, um, making sure that you dress appropriate for the settings. Um, this is a really interesting topic. I know some students are in different professions that they feel like, you know, business casual is appropriate. Um, and there's other professions where a suit and tie is a little bit more appropriate. I look outside um, and I see that it is a hot day. So if you're gonna be doing informational interviews this summer, that might be something that's difficult for you to grasp. Um, and my suggestions too with hot weather as well is like, you know, you don't have to have your jacket on the second that you walk in the door. So just kind of remember me thinking about that. Um, ways that you can find out about what the type of attire is. You can look at their website to see, you know, do they look like they have more of a formal um, type of environment or less formal. Oh, I look at various different websites of like the about us section, you know, sometimes they'll have a picture of the CEO with a surfboard and flip flops. I don't think you should wear, bring a surfboard and flip-flops to that event, but maybe business casual will be a little bit more appropriate for uh, that type of interview. Um, be punctual and respect your contact's time. Um, this is one that seems so obvious, but I hear all the time from employers because we know things happen, right? If you're going to an interview downtown, oh my gosh, I can't find parking, or my directions got me to the wrong place, or um, there was one time where a student had a huge interview and there was a funeral in the neighborhood that he was going to and so everything was backed up. Um, so you can never really do too much pre -prep, prep for this. Try to get there as maybe 30 minutes in advance, but don't walk into the, you know, the area where you're going to let them know you're there until 10 minutes beforehand. Um, follow up a thank you note. Uh, this is for some people it feels super, super old school, but for those of you that understand marketing, there's a lot of different touch points that take place that are really important for you to um, be part of the consideration process. So most organizations, they'll do all the interviews in the same week. Uh, let's say they're doing interviews Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You pop that thank you, not, that thank you note or card in the mail and it gets there on Friday, which is maybe by the time that they're gonna be deciding who the candidate is, it's another touch point for them to go, hey, I'm a great candidate. And I'll tell you, I hear all the time of employers that sometimes they were on the fence about students or two different candidates, and that note was just the one kind of thing that showed the extra personal touch and was very, was what they thought is, was a fun gesture. Um, connect on LinkedIn if you do or if you do have not done so, sorry. Um, that's really interesting. Um, some employers are really excited about connecting on LinkedIn and some aren't, so don't take it personal if they don't. Um, but you know, that's a great way to start building your professional network, uh, follow up the discussion and stay in touch. So again, another thing that I hear that is very common is students will go to the interview, they'll send their thank yous out and they're like, okay, Kelly, now what do I do? Um, my favorite one is to see if you can get a phone call in. Oh, wait, let me just backtrack real quick. Oftentimes when it comes to the thank you note and follow up, people are like, I didn't get a business card. If you forgot to get a business card in any sort of informational interview setting, um, if it's at, whether it's at the company or if you just remember on the way out, there's easy ways online to find that information. Just look up and call the main front desk to give them a call. You probably maybe even contacted them via text, um, as well as um, Phone calls and timing is important. So my little sweet spots for calling up with following up with people um, to try to get them on the phone if you're calling a work line is Monday morning from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. or Friday from 3 to 5. People usually have a tendency to just kind of either starting their day or wrapping up their day to try to get in contact with them um, so that you can either get 
them on the calendar or you can follow up for some offers, some things that you discuss in your conversation. So here's an example of a thank you. Thank you for taking the time from your busy schedule to speak with me by phone today. Our meeting was inf informative and extremely insightful as I learned more about the X industry. I enjoyed hearing about your background and your knowledge of the blank field is impressive. Following your advice, I will contact Mr. Gomez as I continue my career exploration. Thank you again for your help in sharing such valuable information with me. You can also Google, you know, follow up thank you emails and things like that. There's lots of information out there. Okay, networking do's and don'ts. Identify contacts that you, that may build long-term mutual beneficial relationships. So this one's really interesting. Um, I think oftentimes when people are figuring out who they should talk to, they go for like the big dog in the company. They go for the CEO, they go for the finance person. And I think oftentimes too, the ones that are maybe in the role for one or two years that have a title that's an associate or a project manager, they're not getting hit up for as many requests. So I wanna encourage you to not just go for the big titles, but go for people that will be willing and open to working with you and having a conversation with you. Um, as well as they're pretty close to maybe what your experiences are of trying to break into the company if they haven't been there very long and they're gonna know the most up-to-date information on how to get into the organization. Uh, be intentional and make your agenda clear. Um, I think, you know, I think oftentimes we feel uncomfortable in networking settings and so we'll look for some chit chat, but I think being direct and clear is, is important. Uh, especially if you're asking for someone's time, they wanna know what you're looking to talk about. Um, do your homework. You know, I think a lot of times people will, they'll think that, oh, I'm gonna go there and I'm gonna learn about this organization or learn about this company or this person's title and they'll ask them about that information. But, you know, you wanna be respectful of their time and also you're not just there to talk with them, you're there to impress them. So you wanna be sharing with them the information that you know because that's how you're gonna get buy-in from them. Respect your contacts time. Um, I think, you know, it's just something to always be aware of. Dress appropriately for the environment. I've, you know, mentioned that before. Bring a positive attitude. You know, I think um, it's hard. That's a big ask sometimes when you're being put in situations that are nerve wracking. And so just always kind of reminding yourself to put a smile on your face. Um, and, you know, if you need to take a pause, whether it's at a networking event or if you're at an informational interview, sometimes I suggest bringing you know, like a cup of water or not a cup of water, like a analogy or whatever, or you can take a pause and drink a sip of water if you're nervous or you're feeling like you just need to pause. I think that's important too. Um, asking for more contacts. So, you know, if you're finding maybe that it's a fit or it's not a fit, maybe they're saying, I'd love to meet with you, but I don't know how I can help you. Um, oftentimes, you know, asking direct questions such as, okay, well, I know that you're really, you've worked in marketing for 25 years. Who are some people that come to mind that maybe that you think would be the best way to get in contact? And then write down their information. Follow up and thank you notes. Those things, like I mentioned before, go such a long way. Um, you know, it really, especially too, dependent upon the capacity of what your job is. You're, many relationships, you're going to be building relationships. And so you're kind of showing them what your capacity is in relationship building. Um, do not ask, do not ask a new contact for job leads. So that's a lot of students are like, I'm going to reach out to someone on LinkedIn, or I'm going to go up to this person at a networking event. And immediately they're asking them for something. Um, and so I know I mentioned be direct in your intentions before, but you want to make sure that you have a relationship with someone. I don't feel as if you're just asking them for something um, that you actually do value a relationship with them. Um, do not bring any hidden agendas. Um, you know, you might be looking, you might be, let's say you're talking to someone who works at Google and you're like, I want to get into Google really bad. Um, and you've presented it as you want to learn more about their profession and about them. Make sure that you're, you know, that, that your intentions are, are honest and that are there because, you know, people can tell, especially when they work at big companies. I know working at USD, we have a lot of people that want to work at USD. And so if they're coming and asking me for something right away, I'm less likely to help them. I don't feel like their intentions are true. Um, do not attend an informational interview unprepared. So oftentimes some people will say, hey, you know what, this is about you, tell me about yourself. And they're excited and think that that's gonna be sufficient enough, but you're there to also impress them. So you wanna show that you value their time by preparing. And then, you know, don't burn bridges. That could be, you know, many capacities. 
um, that, you know, if you're feeling like you're not knowing what to do, or there's kind of a hairy or a sticky subject that's either coming up or a conversation, I would encourage you to have a conversation with one of our career counselors so that we can help you kind of bridge and have some dialogue if you feel like some things are arising. Um, Savon, yes, would you like to, would you like to share some um, insights with our guests? Yeah, definitely. Um, so I will pull up this screen really quick. Um, oh, it says that I can't oh. share. Let me see. Um, so what advice? Stop sharing screen from my end. Mm -hmm. There. Okay. And then let's try. Oh, perfect. All right, awesome. So um, I, really great information that I thank y'all for sharing that. I think all really good tools and information um, about like networking with LinkedIn. And I honestly didn't know the importance of LinkedIn as much as I do now, um, you know, and because we utilize it a lot, um, especially within sales recruiting. Um, so I just wanted to, this is something that I typically take to presentations and just kind of show to give a little insight um, for, from, you know, our, our side. Um, so LinkedIn is, you know, essentially professional social media, right? Um, it is a recruiter's number one tool that we utilize to find candidates. Um, obviously, we have other avenues, indeed, um, career builder kind of, um, but LinkedIn is really, really probably the main source of um, searching for candidates that I utilize. Um, one thing that I think that maybe a lot of people don't know is that there are keyword searches that we utilize in order to find candidates. So um, whenever you have on your profile, you know, um, sales or internship, or whatever um, is related to your particular field, we actually put those into Boolean searches when we are looking for a particular candidate. Um, and I'll show you some examples of that on the next screen. Um, things that I really think are important, so when you're doing this networking and reaching out to alumni or um, just building your profile, it's really important for, be, for um, those that are looking at your profile to be able to see who you are um, on your page. So it's really important to make sure that you have a couple of a lot of the areas filled out. Um, so there is a skills section and I'll show you all this as well on the next slide. Um, there's a skills portion that you definitely want to have um, highlighted. Um, you want to make sure you have relevant job descriptions. So don't just put whatever you know, internship that you did and, and, and leave it with the company name and your title, put a little body in there about what you did um, or in even some accomplishments that you had. Um, so, you know, if you were ranked number two um, out of all the interns for um, the semester, put that in there. Put in there that you, you know, made calls or that you um, analyzed data and, and these are the outcomes. Um, put in there your organization and awards. So underneath your university, um, you can include in that description what organizations that you were part of. I know for mine, um, I included all of the different organizations that I was a part of and then what years that I, how many years that I was part of that organization. And then even included if I had a leadership position because that's something that we look for too. That's a keyword search that I can utilize, vice president or president. Um, when I'm running searches. Um, kind of what we were talking about earlier about gaining info on um, companies, uh, follow companies. So you can actually go in and, you know, for example, we'll just use Paycom. Um, you can search Paycom and you can actually follow the business so you can see whatever we're posting jobs or if something, you know, has changed or we have blog posts or whatever it may be. Um, and that will help you to really understand, you know, what's going on in the industry and what's going on with that specific company that you're interested in. Um, and the last thing is always have an appropriate picture. Um, that's something that sometimes I see um, that can actually deter people away from your profile if they can't, you know, see a clear photo. Um, and then, of course, everything that we've already been talking about is utilizing it to network. Um, so I won't go too much into that because I think we had a lot of good information there already. 
Um, so this is just an example of a LinkedIn profile from one of our um, sales managers in Sacramento. Um, his name is Joe. Um, so Joe actually, you know, appropriate picture here. Um, his about section is just very clear and concise, bullet pointed. Um, you can tell that he, you know, is interested in sales, um, has management experience. He puts in a few, you know, adjective, adjectives that describe him here. Um, you know, working diligently, both individually and collaboratively. Um, and so whenever I'm running um, searches and I am looking for um, sales students, um, when I type in sales, he's going to be someone that's going to pop up, not just because it's written in his about me, but then also over here when we were, I was speaking earlier about the skills and expertise, he's got sales a couple different times here, right? So he's got sales, sales process, direct sales. Um, some other good things I think that he's got here that I actually do run searches for um, are leadership, communication, team leadership, um, teamwork. Um, I look for cold calling as well because that's what, you know, I'm looking for position wise. Um, but the skills and expertise area is really a great place for you to be able to um, put in any kind of experience that you've had so that you, like I said, you can show up in um, searches. Um, again, and I was kind of talking about the education piece and making sure you put in your um, organizations and awards. So um, like I said, underneath here, I can see that he was part of an honor society. Um, was in a fraternity, um, you know, play football as well. Um, and then I think, you know, putting your GPA, um, especially if it's something that you're proud of, go ahead and put it that in there as well. Um, I definitely do search honors. Um, and like I said, president and all those kinds of things as well. Um, this is just an example of um, an internship that he had. And as I was saying earlier, don't just put, you know, that you are an intern at Target and these are the dates. Um, go ahead and, and fill out a little bit of information of, of what you did there. Um, so we're able to see here, you know, that he was able to increase sales um, by 143% on four different occasions, um, led team zones um, on the sales floor, so, and, you know, executed backroom processes. So did a lot of different things there, and we were able to Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Yes, we can. Okay. Um, so I'll go back to sharing that. Okay. Um, so as I was saying, just, you know, putting as much information and as many details as you can within your profile is really going to help you to be able to show up um, whenever recruiters are running searches um, to find potential candidates for internship opportunities and for full-time opportunities. All right, and I think the last slide here. Oh yeah, okay. So this is just going to intervene, but I will stop there unless you feel like it would be beneficial for me to go into interviewing. Um, it's um, it's twelve forty nine. So maybe we can take some questions from the audience. So um, please feel free to chat your questions to us. Just one last reminder too, for those of you that are looking for compass or passport points, um, please privately chat me in the chat function at the bottom on Zoom, your ID number, please. Any questions for any of us? And Savon, thank you so much for, for the presentation. No problem, my pleasure. Thank you, Savon. Thank you. Okay, um, so we have a question from Lindsay. She asks, how would you suggest reaching out to someone on LinkedIn if you don't have any mutual connections? 
Um, so one of the things that I would do is um, if you're both an alumni of the college, I mean, that's a shared connection there. So I would definitely mention that. Um, I would look at the person's um, profile just to see if you, um, you know, share any, um, if there are anything that you've shared, any shared experiences, right? Uh, it might be, you know, companies, skills, um, activities, interests, hobbies, uh, whatever it might be. Um, and as Kelly mentioned earlier too, um, as long as there's no really hidden agenda, as long as you're really, you know, personalizing that request with your interest in, it might be that you're interested in expanding your network, um, your alumni net network. It might be that, you know, you're really seeking to, seeking for new information or additional information with respect to that um, company or organization. Um, yeah, so I would just, um, I would just, you know, send that email and, um, and, and wait to hear back from that person. Um, my experience has been that most people usually get back in between, you know, anywhere between a, you know, within a week or so. Um, and, um, and if you have, if you still haven't, um, you know, heard from that person, I think it's okay to follow up with that person um, one more time um, after that initial week is up. Uh, let me share something as well. Let me go back to my uh, screen. Share. I'm still on LinkedIn. So, um, USD alumni relations has this account under link, um, LinkedIn. Look for uh, young alumni network. Okay, so they have this profile called um, University of San Diego Young Alumni Network. So this is managed by the alumni relations and the post as a member profile. So if you're connected, if you're connected with this USD Young Alumni Network, and you will see somebody you want to meet with, and uh, um, but they don't share any common friend, but both of you are connected to the, the USD Young Alumni Network, you can actually write a message, message them, and then let them know that um, I'm very interested in meeting with so and so. Uh, can you please do an introduction? They will be happy to write an introduction message. Thanks for sharing that, Alex. And another thing you can do too is um, USD has a um, separate group um, on LinkedIn for, it's, the, it's called the Alumni Association Group. Um, so um, any alumni of the college are welcome to post messages within that group as well. So um, if it's, you know, if you're looking for information about a certain industry or a certain company, um, it's perfectly okay to just, you know, post on that discussion board within that group um, to see if anyone will, uh, will respond. Um, and I also want to just encourage everyone to use team as well, um, because we do have about 3,200 um, Taros on team who are really willing to um, support one another. And um, team also, like I said, you can use the flash mentoring uh, portion to seek out different um, alumni, but you can also use the discussion board to pose your questions and to, um, to engage with others. Do we have any other um, questions? Alex, do you want to um, show our last slide with CDEV resources? Okay, so, uh, again, all those resources you will be able to find on our website, sandiego.edu slash careers. Handshake portal, besides being a career center's job board, you can also use Handshake to make one-on-one -on -one appointment and, uh, um, yeah, make an appointment here. And also, career guide, like I showed you earlier, we break down the career guides to different chapters and you will find many topics under that uh, career resources page. And the team portal, like uh, Dee showed you earlier, you will be able to um, find the team. Um, you can type mentoring.sandigo.edu or you will be able to find the link through our uh, career resource page as well. And um, in addition to that, we've actually also just recently been um, 
got involved in a partnership uh, with um, a, a company called Parker Dewey, uh, where we offer micro internships to um, our current students and recent graduates. And micro internships are, um, you know, short term projects um, that you get paid for. Um, they range from anywhere from five hours to 40 hours. Um, and the information is listed on our website. Um, there is a um, special designated website um, that you would go to, um, which Alex is showing right now, which will carry you over to um, the, the, the page where um, the postings are available. Um, so if you're a current student or a recent graduate who is seeking paid remote work that's short term, um, you're welcome to go on the site um, to access um, those resources. And if there are any alumni um, in the house right now who actually are needing um, students and recent grads to help out with um, these short-term projects, um, please connect with us. We'd love to have you um, uh, list those opportunities um, on this website. Um, okay, so we have a question from Sandra. She asks, if I do get a phone, a phone informational meeting, how long do you suggest us to be on the call, keeping in mind that I want to respect their time? Um, that's a great question. Um, you know, I would think that 30 minutes um, is a is a, is a sort of an ideal time. Um, and then if you, um, and then I would really leave it to that person. Um, so if that person wants to extend that conversation, they'll kind of, you know, they'll give you that prompt. Um, but in terms of making that initial request, I think, um, you know, I think 30 minutes would be, um, would be ideal. What do you think, Alex, Kelly, or Savon? Yeah, I think 30 minutes is pretty standard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think too, one thing that I just want to mention with the 30 minutes is that make sure that the majority of that time they're doing the talking. So the 80-20 rule is important. Um, you know, they're talking 80% of the time, you're talking 20% of the time. Yeah, that's a great. And also, I think it's important to, to go into the meeting with a list of maybe seven to eight questions, um, because you want to make sure that you're sort of leading the conversation. So although you're letting them do the majority of the talking, as Kelly said, um, it's really important to sort of keep it very intentional and have those questions um, so that you're really getting the, the information that you need. But that, that's a great question. There are any others? Savan, is there anything you wish you'd like to add? and giving some really good information and honestly I think a lot of the information that you all presented today you know aligns very well with what exactly um, our thoughts are on the recruiting side um, so I think it was all very good information and um, thank you to everyone that showed up today and uh, participated it was really fun so we know what we're talking about is that what you're saying <laughs> yeah <Yay>. okay good <laughs> yes trust Trust your leaders. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for um, joining us, Savan. And thanks for everyone for, for being here. And um, yeah, and then shall we end on that note? Yep. Yeah, thank, thank you, you everyone. Thank you so much. <laughs>